So I wanted to make a video to kind of show you how you can contribute to open source projects. Over here, we have a project called CodeRacer, which is the project that my Discord community is kind of working on together. And if you wanted to contribute to this, what would be the first steps you need to take? Well, first thing you need to do is you need to fork the project. You can't actually push code to this repository unless you are marked as a collaborator on this project. But we're not going to be marked as one, so let's just go ahead and fork this. And once you fork the project, you will get your own clone of the repo. Okay, and that's going to be added to your own personal GitHub account. And this is where you're going to be doing a majority of your work, right? So let's just go ahead and click on this code button and I'm going to clone this. I use SSH. I have my SSH keys set up. You could also use HTTPS if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this link and I'm going to go to a terminal. All right. And I'll just type in git clone and then paste in that link. But now you have the entire project ready to go in your local machine. Okay, you got all the files here. So let's just make sure it works. So the first thing you're going to do is just do a quick npm install. All right, that's done installing. Now we also use Docker. So technically you should be doing a Docker compose up. I'm going to try to get this running without it. So I'm going to say npm run dev. But all this is kind of outlined typically in a contributing.md file of projects. So if you're planning on contributing to another project, go and look and see if they have a contributing file. And that usually has like the steps that you take to get this all working. Notice that it says fork the repo, clone it, um, set up your .env files. So technically I need to do this and rename this to .env. Install the npm packages, run this command, run this command, run this command, run this command, right? So I am kind of skipping some steps, um, which is why we just got this error. So let's just go ahead and rerun npm run dev. That should set up correctly because now we have that .env file and we can verify if this is working. So let's go to localhost 3000 and there you have it. You have the entire project kind of set up locally and you can actually start playing around with this. So the thing I want to show you is like, if you wanted to actually change something about this, let's say you wanted to add, you know, some to the documentation, you wanted to add a feature. How would you do that? What's the process that you take? Let's just do something really simple. Um, let's say you're a beginner and you just want to kind of work on contributing to some documentation. Okay. So let's just look through here and see if there's anything we could potentially do just to like create some type of change. One thing I would say is that this step is a little bit confusing. Fork my repo and clone your fork. I think these could be two separate steps. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this. Clone your fork. Okay, with that change, technically you don't have to like renumber these things, but I like to do it to keep it consistent. Okay, so that's our change. We're just modifying the documentation a little bit. And we need to create a pull request. We need to make sure that this code that's on our fork is able to be pushed over to the new um, upstream. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to show you a little diagram real quick so that you're not completely lost. Okay. This is the main upstream branch. And this is the fork that you just did. Okay. Which I guess technically this would be called your origin. Fork the repo, basically you're cloning this whole entire repo for your own account. So this is your account. And over here is my web dev Cody account with its own repo. So we forked this so that we can actually start doing work off of this. So you're basically going to create branches off of this. So like create branches and you're going to do that work on your own branch. And at some point you have to create a pull request to get your branch over into my repo, right? So this is where like the pull request happens. And then I will come through and I will approve it and merge it into my main branch. Okay. So we're going to kind of do this process. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new branch and show you how to do this and we'll get the whole thing going. So let's go back to the code. Now I typically do stuff with the command line. Um, but if you're using VS code, I will just walk you through how you could potentially do it. So if you do a, a command shift P to load up your command prompt and type Git, you get a list of all your Git commands that you could potentially do. Um, that's one shortcut, or you can go over here to your Git extension. So right here, source control. And you can see the files that have changed and you can click them and you can kind of inspect, okay, like what was the file before on the left and what is the file now on the right? These are my changes. This is called a git diff. It does a diff between the old and the new. So you understand how stuff is changing. So typically you might have like 10 of these files. You kind of read through them, make sure you don't have like random console logs sticking around. Everything seems good. What you can do is you can add it. And then you could write a message to commit it and then push it to your fork. Now, sometimes what is good to do is you want to check out a new branch 
Um, and that's the branch you're going to be making the pull request off of. So I'm going to go down here to branch. And I'm going to say create branch. Okay. And then it's going to ask you, what do you want to name your branch? I'll say update docs, click enter. And then if you look at the very bottom of the um, screen, you can see that your branch is down here. It says update docs. So that's how you know what branch you're on. And now when we commit, I'm going to say updating the docs to make it easier for easier to follow. Okay. So now the next step is you added all the files that you want into a stage and now you can commit those, which is actually going to commit like a historic ledger of changes and put them on your history. Okay. So let's do a git, I think it's git log. And now you can see that your commit was added to your branch update docs. So there's a chunk of changes that have been committed. And now we need to basically push those to our fork. Okay, so you can just click publish branch here, or if you like doing git push origin main, that's also how you can push it. So I'll just say publish branch. There we go. And now if we go back to our code, remember this is a step we just did. We created a branch. And then we just kind of pushed it into our origin. Now we can go back to our fork and refresh the page. And you'll see up here, it says there's a new branch that has been pushed. And if you look at it, you can go ahead and say click compare and pull request. Another way you can do it is click on this drop down and find the branch that you just pushed to your fork. This is usually a faster approach, but this one might not always be here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the branch. And then I'm going to click contribute and then I'm going to say open pull request. So here's the important part. We are creating a pull request from your forked branch update docs. And we're going to push that to the code racer main. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a pull request. And now this is actually created on my personal project repo. Okay. So as a contributor, I can go through and I could actually approve this. Okay, if you look here, there's actually like five current pull requests on this project. And here's the one that we just created. So this step, you basically wait. And if someone leaves a comment, and gives you feedback, what you do is you need to go through and you need to make those changes again. So if someone says, you know what, this change, it's good, but you need to add a little bit more text here. What you do is you come in, you add some text, save the file, and then you do the same process. You add, you do a commit by typing a message. Um, I'll say like addressing PR comments, you commit that. And then you sync it back up. Okay. So now if I go back to my PR, you'll see that another commit comes in saying addressing PR comments. You'll keep doing this process until everything's good. For example, there's also some checks that run that run like lint and stuff over your code. If these fail, you'll have to go and you have to fix them in your code, commit, um, and push those. But at some point your pull request will get merged in along with other pull requests. So now you have to go and you have to like kind of sync your repo with the changes that are kind of coming in, right? So I'm actually logged in on my phone and I'm going to go ahead and just merge that pull request that was just created because I'm on a different account. This is kind of a strange approach to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now that's been merged in and you'll see in your PR, it says merge now, um, which is good. That means the code was actually accepted. It was merged into the main upstream repo. And now everyone else who's kind of contributing can start pulling this stuff in. Okay. So there might be like, you know, 10, 20 other people who have their own forks. And what they need to do at this point is they need to pull in those changes that just got merged. And typically you do this as often as possible. Just sync your repository up with um, the upstream. So how would you do that? You basically go here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and check out main again. So I'm gonna go ahead and say check out to and then I'll say main. And that'll check out our fork back to main. Again, remember bottom left, it says main down here. That's how you know you're on the right branch. And anytime you're going to create a new branch, make sure you're doing it off of main. But let's go ahead and look because if you look at main here, if I do a get log, notice that those changes that we just did are not on your forks main. So you need to actually pull those changes in. All right, so now we need to pull in the changes from the remote upstream branch. But one thing I noticed is that I cloned this repo, but I don't have a upstream set. So this is a part of the documentation we might need to add. You can just simply do git remote add, and then I'll type in the link to the repo. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, 
type this in. So I'll say git remote add upstream. Type that in. All right, now after we added the remote, let's do a git fetch upstream. And that should hopefully update our fork to have all the latest branches and changes that were on the upstream, okay? And once you've done the git fetch upstream, you can do a git pull. You can say pull from, and I'll say upstream, and then I'll say main. And that'll pull in all the changes from the upstream into your main. You can go ahead and sync those up to your fork. And at this point, if you go back to your own fork, so let's just go back to um, my other account, okay, Code Racer. You'll see that if I go back to my main branch, and if I go to my commits, you'll see that we have the commits that are pulled in from the main branch that are now on the fork, okay? So this is the process you have to take. One more time, you basically check out a branch, you add your changes, you commit them, you push them, you create a PR, and then when the PR is merged, you need to constantly pull in those upstream changes to your own branch. Now, I do believe my VS Code is not set up properly because I think a lot of that stuff is taken care of. Um, I don't know why I had to set up my remotes, but I keep that in mind. You should have an upstream that's pointing to the actual project repo, and then you should have your origin, which is set to your fork. But uh, yeah, that's about all I wanted to share with you today. If you guys thought this was a good overview, let me know. Um, if there's anything I missed, let me know as well. Um, hopefully this is all the information you kind of need to know to hit the ground running or at least know like 90% of Git to be able to be a successful contributor to an open source project. Other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.